Greetings, everyone, to part three of our five-part series on getting going with Python. If you haven't already checked it out, hop over to one of our versions of Video 2 for installing Python on your system of choice. We got uh, some Linux, we got some Mac, and we got some Windows. So just go ahead, click right there, hop over and watch Video 2 if you haven't done that already. Today's topic is all about the Python interpreter. Uh, the Python interpreter, it sounds scary, kind of like interrogator, but it's really not. All the interpreter does is takes your code, turns it into something the computer can actually understand, and then executes it. Pretty straightforward, really. And it's one of the powerful things about Python. You can just go at your code, you don't have to let it compile, you just run through the interpreter, and it all gets put together and run on the fly. Pretty neat, really. So there are two ways to use the interpreter. The first way is to start it up, giving it a, a specific Python file to run, and then any necessary arguments that file needs. That's something we're actually going to cover in video five. Today we're going to be using something called the interactive mode. Interactive mode is nice for just playing around and testing little code snippets. Now there are two ways to do this. I'm going to get rid of the zipline show here. We don't need that. But you should go to the ziplineshow.com, check it out. It's a good place. Leave us a comment. Um, so we're going to open up idle here. Now, when you go into the Python menu, there are actually two options. The first option right at the top is idle Python GUI. That is an interactive interpreter, but it's also the development environment that ships with Python. Um, pretty limited in scope, really just nice for basic programs. Doesn't have like version control or anything built in but it's pretty handy and that's what we'll be using. So we'll get that opened up here. Alternatively, if you don't want the full graphical environment, then there's another option right here, Python command line. That just opens up a command line interface with Python already running in interactive mode. That's all it does. So this bugger right here is the Python shell. Um, this is basically the interpreter in interactive mode. It's got a nice little blinking cursor there that we can, you know, do and look at. I'm going to configure IDE here to use a little bit bigger uh, font size so we can all see it better. Ooh, 22. Big apply. Holy, gigantic. So there you go. That is the starting screen you get when you go into interactive mode with the Python interpreter. Uh, so you see you can type copyright credits or license for more information. So let's actually get rolling with this. Um, this. This interpreter is a great way to start playing with Python, understanding some of the basic commands, and just getting a feel for how you do Python programming. Uh, let's just do a basic hello world to get things going here. So I'll just type hello world. Bam. So there you go. One command, hit enter, and it just prints out hello world as you would expect. Pretty darn simple. Uh, print suck, the print function just prints stuff back to the interactive interpreter. That's all it does. Something to note, though, is that this is the version 3 way of doing things. Remember that whole deal way back from video 1? Well, the print function actually did get backported to 2.7. So we're using the 3.0 syntax, but this is 2.7. It's, it's designed to support that from the 3.0 version or 3.1, 3.2, whatever. Um, if you want to see the older version 2, it's just print, and then instead of using parentheses, you just use spaces. Does the exact same thing. In 2.7, these are equivalent. If you're using version 3.0, though, you're going to want to use this first version with parentheses. Uh, version 3 does not like it without parentheses. So, don't get confused if we switch between these two. As far as Python 2.7 is concerned, they are the same thing. So let's do some other stuff. Um, like I said, the Python interpreter is a great way to really start learning stuff using this interactive mode. So for instance, it can actually be used as an overly powerful, underly usable calculator. So I'm sure you've done basic math, 2 plus 2. Well, the interactive interpreter can do that too. So there you go, spits out four. Uh, we can do four minus three, spits out one. Hey, you can do math. 12 divided by four, you just use a nice slash sign there. 
and you know, get three, and then three times four, and you get 12. So as you can see, it's doing all the normal math stuff right off the bat. You don't have to create a full program to play around with some of this stuff. What's really neat is you can even import various modules to start playing with them. We mentioned back in video one that the extensive standard library is one of the great strengths of Python. Well, all that stuff is available right here in your interactive interpreter. Um, so how about we try something? One particular module that might be pretty useful in the next video, hint hint, is the ability to get a random number. For that, we're gonna need the random module or class so to get that, all we do is use the import command, and then you see it turns orange because it's a reserved command name, and then we're after random. So import random, hit enter, and there you go. It doesn't display anything, but random has now been imported. So with that loaded, we can use the randint method to get a random number. Just do some random, uh, randint, and we'll just go one to 10. And you see, this is really cool. See how it's popping up a little tool tip on what this particular method needs? That happens with all of these nice built-in fancy things. So it's real easy to get coding with Python. All right, so there we got the number one in this case. It's not very exciting at all, but as you can see here, this is just asking for a random integer or whole number between one and 10. In this case, we got one. If we run again, we might get a six, we might get a two. Well, let's actually see what we get. Random dot rand int one ten. Oh, we got one again. You are not being very random, or are you? Okay, there we got two. So <laughs> rand int is not being particularly inventive this evening. That's all right though. Uh, finally, I want to show you that you can actually do full code blocks here. So far, we've just been doing single line commands, print hello world, add 2 plus 2. Not very exciting. Uh, Python does allow you to do a full multi-line command, loops, if statements. So let's actually take a look at that. Um, so this example I'm going to be using is actually pulled straight out of the Python docs on the interpreter. So it might look familiar if you've read through that. First off, we're just going to get a little variable here the world is flat, we're going to set that equal to 1. Pretty easy, doesn't do anything, but now it's stored in men memory. So let's do an if statement. If the world is flat, and now in Python, I'm going to use the full colon here to say, hey, we're going to be doing more stuff. So that's kind of roughly equivalent to a squiggly bracket in other programming languages. All right, so now I'm going to hit enter. See how it doesn't have the full prompt anymore, and it's moved me in a tab? Python knows that I'm going to be typing more, so it's already moved me in a tab. Remember that tab indentation is what determines code groupings in Python. So now we can actually go ahead and put in some sort of condition for our if statement. Um, let's just put in print. Be careful not to fall off. All right, so I'm going to hit enter again, and you see how it brings me down the line, but I'm still in a tab. Python doesn't know that I'm done yet. It's going to let me put in another line to go inside this if statement if I want. But since I am done, I'm going to just leave this line blank and hit enter again. When I do that, it's actually going to execute. And knowing basic logic, this is going to be if one, print, be careful not to fall off, so we would expect it to be printed out. Hey, there it goes. Be careful not to fall off. Pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, the interpreter is a great way to kind of test bits of code that you might want to include in your programs. Maybe you're working on some large project and you just want to know if a particular uh, chunk of code is going to work. The interpreter is a great way to do that. You don't have to make an o its own file. You don't have to run it. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You can just hop into the, the interactive interpreter, type it in quick, bam, it'll spit the answer right out. It's also a great way to start learning its syntax and playing around because the interpreter is actually quite nice about errors. So even if you mess up, like if I do this, fruit plus one, I'm using fruit as a variable name, but I've never done anything with that before. It's not declared anywhere. It's not instantiated anywhere. It doesn't exist. So now if I hit enter, oh no, error. Name error, name fruit is not defined. Well, that basically tells you that you're using a variable 
that you have never used before and it doesn't exist as far as Python is concerned. So the interpreter is really just a great way to play around and kind of get used to Python syntax before you get into larger programs where you might get lost in the logic and the syntax kind of escapes you. So if you're just starting with Python, spend a few minutes in the, in the interactive interpreter here, play around with some basic commands, import a few modules, uh, do stuff like random ints just to get a feel for it, and uh, yeah, it's a good old time. So in the next video, Ben is actually going to walk you through creating a basic program, so hop on over and check it out.